a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to stand in front of you to present the last session. I've been entrusted this responsibility of taking you all through the last session, so I think we need a little bit of sustainability in our energy levels, I suppose. And before that, before I go and uh, go into the topic, I would like to thank the organizers of the World Coffee Leaders Forum for giving me an opportunity to come here and present this topic. I don't know if many of you all are aware of what fair trade is all about, but I'm quite certain that there's a significant number of participants who have been exposed, especially from Latin America or from Europe. And I would like to introduce more of the local Asian Korean population in terms of this concept, which has uh, a very unique beginning. So first of all, some basic facts that you already know. Um, coffee is, is probably the most valuable and widely traded tropical agricultural product. 25 million farmers produce 80% of the world coffee. So that's what I would, I would request you all to have in mind that each time you drink a coffee, as Juliet was mentioning, there's a human being behind that who's producing it. There's a human being who does not have things that we take for granted. A source for clean drinking water, education for the children. These are things that we assume are a normal part of our life, but which are not that normal for a lot of those farmers. And it is also a vital source of income for many of the countries, most would be least developed countries. And we have other facts that 1.6 billion cups of coffee being consumed today over the world. And most of the growth in the last decade has been from producing and emerging markets. And the global market is worth around 71 billion. But there's one interesting fact that you all should know when you go and buy your coffee. How much of it goes back to the producer? It's hardly 7 to 10%. And that is the inequality we are trying to address at this moment. So we have, we all know what the challenges are. We have always been discussing this for the past two days especially. We know that it's a cash crop with high financial uh, dependence. It, is, uh, it has constant pressure under the trade, supply to demand as we are facing at the moment. Then profit sharing is always a problem. As I told, seven to nine percent is what a producer invariably gets. And it's a very volatile market. I, I'm quite certain Professor Gilbert wouldn't agree with that statement of volatility. But uh, there's one aspect of volatility is as described today morning, if the, if the market is not very volatile, it will not hit the importer or the exporter. But for a producer, he does not have any control on that market. He's completely at the mercy of trade. So that's one thing that we need to look at. And of course, the normal factors in terms of inadequate access to infra infrastructure, financial resources, these are some of the factors. So overall, we want to call it a coffee crisis, although it's normally termed only for a specific period when we had a significant supply demand uh, difference. So 25 years ago, there were a set of people who decided to take matters in their own hand and say, OK, let's, let's do something to change this equation. And they formed Fedric. So fair trade is a partnership-based dialogue, transparency, and respect. And it, it seeks greater equity in international trade. That's, that's the theoretical aspect of, of fair trade. So it's, it's a combined effort of organizations, businesses, to promote the principles of fair trade, which is basically empowering producers, making trade fair, and create sustainable livelihoods. So that's what fair trade is all about. 
So, those are the principles of fair trade. I will not go into reading those, but it's basically market access to marginalized farmers and sustainable and equitable trading relationships, which are significant in, in, in fair trade. So, there are many organizations which promote fair trade, and the largest is uh, FLO Fair Trade, which I am a part of. So I'm not too sure whether you've already seen these logos, but if you haven't, then you will be seeing them in future. So FLO is, is a multi-stakeholder, not-for-profit organization. And it is part owned or majority owned by producers. So it has three components. One is the producers. One is the marketing organizations, which are in, uh, represented in individual countries. And then there is FlowCert, which certifies fair trade, which I belong to. So what it does is it offers fair trade certification through various tools, which are basically fair trade standards and services. So I will be going into individual details of, of standards and producer services. In terms of standards, we have made these for producers and for non-producers, non, non uh, basically to ensure traceability and chain of custody for non-producers. And in terms of services, that's where we differ from a lot of sustainability initiatives, is we support farmers in becoming more sustainable, in being more organized, and getting fair trade certified. We also go ahead and subsidize the certification fee up to the extent of around 75% for them to get fair trade certified. And one of the other concerns is access to finance. And fair trade has actually started a fund called Producer Access Fund, where close to around 3.7 million US dollars have been uh, distributed in 2013, and we expect this fund to grow to close to around 25 million by the end of 2013. This is basically to pro provide as much financial access as possible to uh, producers. So, when I go into standards, we have certain key objectives, and some of the key objectives is what I intend to go into at the moment. One is the fair trade minimum price and premium. So I don't know whether you all um, had an opportunity to attend Jeff's presentation in the morning. And there he had given a slide on the minimum price. So the minimum price has been decided based on the cost of production of coffee in terms of what stakeholders feel would be an, would be an ideal amount as a minimum price, as a safety net. So it does not play around with what the vagaries of the market is, but it is, it is at a level which will prevent them from being exposed to the dips in the market, for example. So just to give you an example, if I were to take Arabic or conventional, then the minimum price is 1.4 US dollars. So the market could be at any level, but should the market price go less than 1.4, then there will be a safety net where the farmer will not be paid anything less than 1.4 US dollars. Over and above this is a fair trade premium. There is an additional premium that goes to farmers to the extent of 30 euro cents a pound. And that is actually used for the social benefits which the farmers can themselves decide as to what would be appropriate. So some of the photos that you see are examples of what has been invested. So that's machinery for processing in one of the producer groups. That's um, another example. Another is actually a budget for a school in in Tanzania. So these are just sort of like examples of 
what can be done with the fair trade premium. But the key is to understand that the farmers are, or have the right to decide what is appropriate and what would be best for them. So basically, we are looking for empowerment of farmers. The next most important, again, is pre-financing. So we say that at least 60% of your contract value has to be given as pre-finance to producers in case they seek that, because that's one of the significant problems we see in coffee trade, and we wanted to address that in a manner where they have access to finance before the product is even sold. Third, what we ask is a long-term stable trade partnership, and we seek that there's a sourcing plan from the trader so that farmers know exactly how much they are going to sell for the next cropping season. Then, of course, Juliet has already spoken about the physical traceability to ensure the integrity of a product when it reaches the consumer. And so I don't think I need to explain anything more than that. But apart from this, the, the standards basically ensure that we look for social development, economic development, environment development, and of course, one of the biggest is the prohibition of child labor. So social development can be in terms of how you want to organize yourself. It could be freedom of association. It could be uh, the, the rights of workers who are working in the farm. Environment development could range from using uh, chemicals, which should not be used, or biodiversity, or greenhouse gas emissions, and of course, economic development, which is assured by the premium and the minimum price. So that's, in, in principle, we have an application, we have an audit, then we do the certification and evaluation to decide whether an organization is fit enough to be certified. And those are the facts about fair trade. We have 1,149 producer organizations. These are not necessarily only coffee. Coffee is around 380 producer organizations. And 80% um, of this represents smallholders. And the fair trade premium that has been distributed this in 2012 was 80 million uh, euros. And in coffee, that was 25 million euros that has been given to close to around 580,000 farmers who produce close to around 57,000 metric tons in 2012. So fair trade is a powerful tool for value addition, access to global market, dissemination of good agricultural, environmental, and social practices, and ensuring protection and sustainable future for farmers, workers, and their families. So what I'm doing at the moment is I've actually taken a video from the website of one of our um, certified clients who is in Africa. And uh, kindly excuse the quality of the video in case you feel it is not the best. But it gives you an in indication of what exactly happens in a fair trade certified farm. The video, please. Kagera Cooperative Union popularly known as KCU, is a leading producer and exporter of Robusta and Arabica coffee in Tanzania. Established in 1950s, KCU is made of 125 voluntary primal cooperative societies within three districts, Bukoba, Muleba, and Misenyi in Kagera region, northwest of Tanzania. Since its establishment, KCU has developed in various stages, 
it has also undergone various certification as per market requirement so as to capture the coffee market. The turning point of KCU has been the successful mobilization of its member to produce quality coffee over recent years and subsequently its affiliation to a fair trade partner in Europe in 1990s. With the fair trade movement, KCU has been able to add value to its product by selling instant coffee and establishment of organic product. Through the fair trade movement, KCU export about 300 tons of organic coffee all over the world. This enabled the union to battle up in the market and get profit for its farmers. With gain from fair trade has helped to assist members to meet their social obligations, to supplement school fees for their children, health services, and other basic needs. The fair trade social premium has also assisted KCU members to work together towards consolidating their union as it constructs and improve road and bridges to their crop collection centers. With the fair trade minimum prices, KCU members have been able to invest in various projects. Among them is Tanganyika Instant Coffee Factory, Tanika, of which the union owns 51% of the shares. Tanika, the only instant coffee factory in Africa, south of Sahara, has the capacity of producing more than 600 tons of spray dried coffee per annum. Beside investment in the instant coffee factory, KCU also own its own coffee curing plant, the Bokop, which for years has been processing its coffee for fair trade market. Among beneficiaries of KCU fair trade premium earning include Hekima Secondary School in Bukoba Rural District and Katoma Nursery and Primal Schools. It's improving the quality of KCU members' coffee. KCU has often utilized the services of Maruku Agricultural and Research Institute, which produces seedling and demonstrates modern method of coffee farming and other crops. KCU handles Tanzania coffee in a way that satisfies both its customers and members. The future of the coffee is assured as the plants are being protected from insects and pests and the new plants are being introduced. Sorry about the quality of the video um, and the audio. You can actually access this uh, video from the website of KCO and coffee if you google it so you'll have the entire video for you all to listen to but basically what the video was showing was how farmers take charge of their own lives and they are able to invest and make decisions so the underlying factor is empowerment empowerment of those primary farmers who are in different parts of the world Papua New Guinea or any other place which we would consider very, very remote. And that is the key idea behind fair trade. Just to finish, I would like to quote a word, as Julie did, a, a sentence from uh, the CEO of fair trade. And she says, uh, she actually said that last week when she said, empowerment is 
very difficult to, mo to measure, but it's, you will know it when you see it. So with that parting line, I would like to finish this presentation and would welcome as many questions as possible.